This is the Domain Magnet Show, where you'll learn everything you need to know about buying, optimizing, and selling online businesses with your host, Michael Baraslavsky. This episode is sponsored by the Domain Magnate newsletter. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter on domainmagnate.com to learn about what's happening in the industry. And today we have an exciting guest, Ian Bond, who acquired over a couple dozen drop shipping and e-commerce stores and operates nine of them now. Hi, Ian. Hey, Michael. How are you? I'm good, good. So where are you, where are you calling from? I am in Abu Dhabi, which is the capital of the United Arab Emirates, in the middle nice. of the desert. And I am based in Thailand, so we, we are both in these really exotic locations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you, you mentioned before that, that you had a career on Wall Street and then you moved into the, into the online stuff and started acquiring different businesses and also teaching. Uh, so let, let's start with how did, you, how did you actually get into online business and just briefly sure, sure. about your previous career, yeah. Yeah, sure. So, so, you know, I started on Wall Street in 1980, so it's over four decades now. And in my day job, I look at, uh, I, I have looked at literally every asset class that's investable for both institutional investors as well as individual investors. And after the financial crisis, um, I realized that my very large compensation package was not going to you know, return I, that, that my my sat, my compensation package would not return to the pre-financial crisis levels, and uh, that my corporate income would 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 end, and you know, hopefully because I, I I could make it end before my need for income would end. And so I started to look at online assets back in 2013 and 2014, and since I have you know my superpower would be looking at, uh, you know, all different types of asset classes, which I do in my day job, you know, I, I, I kind of went through methodically kind of all of the different monetization models in, in the online asset world and kind of, you know, uh, uh, started to evaluate them. Back in those days, you know, the information wasn't as easy to get. Um, and, and there were a lot of issues around, there were a lot of trust issues back then, more, more so than now. And, and so, uh, and then of course I, you know, looked at my own skill set and tried to figure out, you know, what would fit me best. Yeah, that's very good. So yeah, people often ask me, how do I get started? How do I acquire my first business? And that's usually my recommendation exactly like that. Yeah. You just started looking at what, what are you good at? What is your skill set? What is your budget? What kind of, what are some business models like learn about the industry? And that's exactly what you did, right? And so how long did yeah. it take you from like the first time that you started looking at acquiring an online business until you felt that you were ready and until you, you actually acquired your first deal? So I, I would say that in earnest, you know, the end of, uh, of 13, I started, um, you know, kind of really, uh, you know, kind of accumulating the information. Uh, I, re I actually relocated to Abu Dhabi from New York City where I'd lived for a dozen years in 2014. That freed up an enormous amount of time. I was traveling 130,000 miles a year in my day job. I built businesses on four continents in the wealth and asset management and private banking business. And, and so, you know, uh, uh, moving to Abu Dhabi back in September of 14 freed up an enormous amount of time. And so that, that's when I really kind of was able to dig into it uh, deeply. And, and what I did was, um, you know, I, I kind of bought every course on how to build these things. As, as many as I could, because I, I kind of figured that, you know, if you're going to be an older an owner uh, uh, and I have, you know, kind of more money than time, you know, given my circumstances as a full-time employee, that, you know, I, I really needed to understand why things were built the way they're, the way they're, you know, being offered for sale. And so, you know, I kind of got into the weeds as much as I could in terms of, you know, you know, why things are built uh, the way they were built uh, with the intention that I'd be an, an, an investor and a buyer and not a builder because I don't have the time for it, and et cetera. All right. Very good. So, yeah. So how long would you say it took you like a year or two years before you yeah, bought well, your first business? Uh, so we, we bought our first couple of websites at the end of 2015. Okay. Um, how, how big yeah. were they? Like what? Uh, what oh, uh, you know, they, they, these were in the twenty-five thousand dollar range back in the okay. day. So yeah. So, and and then you know, one of those sites, um, you know, kind of just exploded, 
And so there have been many, many months since then where we earn more money in a month than we paid for that store. So, so you know, revenue in that, in that store, you know, generally hovers around, you know, kind of a million and a half to two and a quarter million, depending on what's going on. And, you know, obviously, and I think when we bought it, it was a $300,000 revenue kind of a store. So yeah, very good. And yeah. uh, who, who is we, did you have, did you hire some people? Did you partner with someone? How did you arrange yeah. like management operating those businesses? Well, I have, I'm lucky there because my partner is my wife and she left the job on Wall Street and joined me in the summer of 2015 here. And we decided, made a decision for our family of two uh, children. They are now uh, 13 and 15. And we decided that she would not look for a job here. She left a, a career on Wall Street too. And that, that we would build, uh, you know, kind of a, our online empire together. And so she kind of has the, uh, you know, very different than me. She has the kind of operational side as her skill set, and she's very uh, linear. And you know, when you mix that with the fact that I'm kind of all over the place, um, you know, it makes for an interesting marriage sometimes. But at least we have complementary skills. So that's perfect. You are the deal guy, yeah. and she's the one managing things. Yeah. And she's the one telling me to slow it down. We need to get this under control. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. And what brought you to Abu Dhabi though? Uh, there, was a, there was a fantastic opportunity here to build a um, wealth and asset management business for the, 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 the second largest bank here. And, um, uh, you know, the, a lot of the wealth assets here are managed outside the country. And from uh, my experience when I worked at Goldman Sachs, where I was the guy flying into countries in Latin America, taking asset, you know, investment assets out, I knew that ultimately the local banks would, would uh, you know, end up dominating or at least get their fair share of, of these assets. And so when I saw this opportunity, I said, you know, I've seen this movie, it works out really, really well for the, for the big local players. And so I was fortunate enough to get an opportunity with some people that, you know, kind of knew my background, and, and it's been just an absolutely wonderful experience. I, I, I love what I'm doing, but I am retiring next June and hopefully joining you in Thailand. Okay, very, very cool. So you, you bought those two first websites, both the yeah. e-commerce stores. And by the way, how did you decide on e-commerce? What did you basically decide to target only e-commerce businesses? And why did you choose e-commerce? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. And, and you know, what I did was, uh, uh, you know, kind of, you know, look at the, you know, the, the kind of the skills needed to, uh, uh, you know, kind of be successful in the various monetization models. And, you know, high ticket drop shipping seemed to fit, you know, kind of my skill set. So um, I think high ticket drop shipping gets a bad name for, gets a bad rap for a couple of things. Number one, people think it's really complicated to, they're really complicated to operate. And given my background and given my, and managing lots of people and my wife's background, um, you know, we put in systems and processes and it's, you know, it's allowed us an enormous amount of freedom. We're, we're you know, we're never, you know, really kind of watching what's going on while the, the you know, while the, while the day is, uh, you know, kind of people are doing things during the day in the United States. Obviously, we overlap a little bit with uh, the United States in their mornings and our evenings. But we had to build, you know, the, our businesses so that they would run without our intervention. So, you know, so so I, I think that that was uh, that that fear was overrated. And, uh, you know, so, you know, we built the, the, the processes and systems and now we scaled it. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, we can easily scale beyond the, the nine that we're, we're running. And I, I suspect that we probably will, uh, you know, when I, when I uh, you know, have more bandwidth myself. Um, and then, so that's kind of wrap number one on high ticket drop shipping, which is, I think it's misunderstood for, for the operational aspects. And, um, you know, there are, there are some positives in terms of dealing with suppliers. You know, I'm an old salesman. Uh, and don't have any problem getting on the phone. Not that I do it very often, but I don't have, and I actually enjoy getting on the phone and talking to people. 
that's not a, a big deal for me if I have to do that. And then, then the you know kind of the other thing is that the margins in in drop shipping are are, are relatively poor if you look at you know versus uh, uh, other businesses, uh, other online uh, monetization models. But we've found a way to increase those by combining you know kind of the strategies that you know kind of the guys that are focused on content do. So you know we you know publish well over a hundred thousand you know words of content across I think three of our sites um, um, uh, you know every month and you know we're, we're you know we're using affiliate strategies we're using ad strategies we're driving an enormous amount of organic traffic uh, to our sites I learned real real early on that spending money on Google ads which is kind of the typical way to drop shippers drive traffic to their stores is a uh, you know is a very short term uh, fix and that you have to you have to build a, a strong organic profile and I credit Matt Diggity for that I you know he I, I was at an Empire Flippers uh, retreat it was their third one I think it was in 2018 and he gave a success story uh, on e-commerce and you know it, it you know the the affiliate world where 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 they can't really afford any you know kind of paid traffic and the high ticket drop shipping for world which never looks at content you know there was just a perfect marriage to be made there in terms of combining the strategies which is what we've done over the last you know call it three years very interesting so yeah. tell us a bit more about the high ticket drop shipping what what is a high ticket like how big are the items so what type of items are you selling yeah so what, so what you know margins like yeah, yeah. So, so any, any, you know, anytime you, you know, you know, uh, look around the house or you see somebody with a hobby that you know is expensive, um, you know, it's an opportunity. And podcasting. Yeah, uh, well, I, you know, podcasting equipment's pretty, 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 uh, you know, pretty, pretty uh, low, low budget these days. But I mean, look, you know, uh, you know, the, Boats. the, the uh, yeah, the, the, the big, the big uh, the site that that I mentioned earlier. We sell bathroom vanities. So in the last what five or six years, we've sold you know ten thousand bathroom vanities. Okay, what, what's to people. a bathroom vanity? Well, you go into your bathroom and there's a sink and there's a faucet and there's a cabinet and you know in in the United States, people are crazy for remodeling and they buy every, everything from thirty six inches to one hundred and eight inches uh, bathroom vanities when they remodel. And you know we sell we have three dozen brands. Um, probably more. I haven't looked at the site lately uh, where that, that we sell and these sell for, you know, a thousand to over $3,000. And you can't get in a car, Michael, and go see any relevant selection any place. So they have to be bought online. I mean, uh, you know, it's just really not possible. Uh, in that world, uh, the competition is people like uh, Home Depot. And, you know, quite frankly, we can, we can be better at providing expertise, we can be better at providing selection, we can be better at providing um, uh, customer service than, than the competitors. Okay, and, very good. and so, yeah, so, so that's, that's, that's kind of- uh, So yeah. the commerce store earns, you mentioned like a million, million, a million and a half in annual revenue and what kind of margins do you get on high ticket items? So, yeah, so, so in, that, in that store, the opportunities on the content side are, are fairly limited. So that's in the, like the 15 to 17% range, um, net margins. Um, uh, yeah, it's very variable depending on shipping. And actually right now um, we're doing very well because while freight is uh, expensive coming into the United States, uh, suppliers have raised their prices, but fr freight intra the United States is not, is not that expensive. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, yeah, we, we, at this time of year in the fall, going into Christmas, particularly Christmas, freight rates go up a lot and it's a, it can be difficult. Um, but but it's, been a, it's been a fantastic year so far this year. You know, you know, knock on wood, I hope it continues. Okay, very good. So that is a business that you acquired in 2014 for just $25,000 and it's now earning like a million, million and a half in revenue with, you mentioned like 15 or more percent uh, margin. So that's yeah. very good. So that's yeah, a business so, that, yeah, that's probably worth yeah. like a million dollars now, right? No, I don't think I don't think it's probably worth that much. But you know, I you know, uh, I uh, who knows? Yeah. It, 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 so yeah. So we acquired that in November of 2015, and 
yeah, so, you know, look, the, uh, the values are definitely going up. Um, I, you know, the higher price drop shipping stores tend to, tend to be more difficult to sell. Um, so, yeah. you know, they, they just take, take longer, the smaller ones where people, uh, you know, can, you know, sell at higher multiples because people, you know, want to, want to kind of, you know, get a starter site. And there aren't aggregators, you know, in in um, drop shipping like there are in, in you know, like uh, FBA or content sites. So, so multiples aren't quite as robust, you know, in drop shipping. And what's it like to operate? So you you don't really deal with uh, physical uh, items, right? You just have the the manufacturers who handle that. So you, I understand yeah. you you just accept the payment from a customer, maybe through PayPal for Stripe, and then you have. You fill in the order with the manufacturer, and then they they ship it right in your name. Yeah, yeah. So so yes. In in, in six years, we've never seen a product. Okay. So uh, except that we had a supplier in the UK uh, try to seduce us to carry his uh, uh, his brand, and he sent us one here. Uh, yeah. Though it wasn't one of wasn't one that we sold to anybody. But yeah, we're we're middlemen, and and so if there's a problem with uh, something that's damaged or something. We either arrange for a return or negotiate a, uh, you know, a, a settlement between the uh, the buyer and the, the supplier, uh, but we don't we don't ever touch any of these physically, uh, not in not in that vertical at least. Um, we have taken some inventory in some other uh, verticals occasionally, but we prefer not to do it. Um, the way that we do fatten our margins, um, because. You know, I'm always looking for that opportunity. Is we've worked out arrangements with, with arrangements with uh, uh, several of our suppliers, where we can pre-purchase um, inventory for them and get like a you know kind of an eight percent or nine percent or ten percent uh, reduction in our cost. Mm -hmm. So if you take something that might have a seventeen percent margin, and you know basically you know increase that by fifty percent. You know that's really a, a quite efficient use of capital. I'm not a, a, at all adverse to putting capital into the business. Um, I just want to see my capital return to be really quickly, which is one of the reasons that, for example, you know we didn't you know uh, uh, you know uh, go into FBA. I mean that's that's a has very bad capital, very very bad capital efficiency compared to drop shipping. You know yeah. uh, drop shipping, yeah, drop shipping is incredibly capital efficient. Okay, very good. And so what is it like to operate the business? Do you just operate it by yourself, yourself and your wife, or do you have some people helping? No, no, we have, uh, you know, numerous VAs that work for us. Um, you know, everything from people that are doing customer service. Every, uh, we have a bookkeeper. We have uh, people doing, uh, I think, two or three people, two, two people doing uh, Pinterest pins for us, you know, kind of all manner of, of things that people will work for us. And then, you know, I have right now, at least I'm thinking at least three agencies, everything from one man show to real agencies that, that, that produce content for us that are, you know, kind of our partners in producing content. Um, so, you know, we have, you know, you know, anytime we need any kind of code inserted or something like that, We've spent, you know, well into six figures on Upwork over the years. Oh, probably, nice. yeah, probably, so, you know, so probably you, closing in on that on five or two. Have you found most of the people that you work with through for Upwork or in other freelancers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, back, you know, kind of when we were doing a lot heavier duty uh, uh, building, um, you know, so I mentioned uh, before when we were chatting that we've probably purchased two dozen sites or, or more. A lot of those were smaller sites that we've, we, we uh, aggregated, so we wanted access to suppliers. Suppliers are the real gold in this business. So when you, when you, when you see a site that's a young site and maybe it, it may or may not have any revenues, but it, it has you know, supplier relationships and you don't have those suppliers, that's, that's actually very valuable and the, the seller probably doesn't know that. Okay. What's, the, so, what's the difficult part? Is it finding the suppliers or is it setting up a relationship? Well, you know, being in, in, the, in the Middle East, yeah, it's, 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 it's finding, speaking to, establishing the relationships. You know, there's only so much time in the day. And so that's, that's a way for us to substitute money for time. Mm -hmm. are, um, they not, you know, are they not online? Are those suppliers generally not, we don't have much online presence? 
uh, they, they, you, 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 you generally need to have a, uh, an, an interview with them, have them get to know you. You have to reach out to them. That's just more work than I want to put mm -hmm. into it. We actually now have um, a couple of virtual assistants that are regularly reaching out to suppliers. So we're doing it, you know, we are doing it ourselves. Um, but back in the day, uh, early on, the fastest way to do it was to acquire, you know, kind of smaller sites. Okay, very good. And for this website, do you have a lot of suppliers for this e-commerce uh, dropshipping business? Yeah, I mean, depending on the niche, yeah. I mean, we can, you know, we have, uh, we have, uh, you know, kind of one store that's our, our, our you know, kind of our, one of our uh, a smaller stores that probably has a half a dozen. And then, you know, mm -hmm. the one that I just mentioned probably has three dozen. So it kind of depends what's available in the niche. Um, it'll also depend, you know, obviously, things with higher price points, you know, we, we sell some things that are, you know, over 10,000 uh, and as high as 20, I think uh, 21 or $22,000 was the highest uh, uh, order that I remember seeing. So, you know, in the, in the really higher end things, um, you know, you'll probably generally have fewer suppliers. Um, and then there, there's some where there's a plethora of suppliers, you know, bathroom vanities happens to be one where there's lots of suppliers. It's a, it's a horrible niche. If you're, you know, if you're inspired by this, don't, don't, don't go into it. I mean, you know, we learned the, we learned the hard way that, uh, and, you know, and, and we do quite well, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish this on anyone else. Oh, very good. And so how much time would you say you spend yourself on that website, the, the bathroom vanity website, you and your wife? So if you look at all nine of our stores, my, my wife, um, spends, uh, uh, you know, maybe a few hours a day uh, uh, working on the stores, mostly managing our virtual assistants and answering questions um, or maybe doing some research, you know, at the most, as you, as, you know, as I just mentioned, I have a full-time job. So my kind of joy in life is looking at the analytics and the numbers and the, you know, kind of the, the balance sheet, but, you know, the income statement um, and, you know, kind of thinking about the strategy um, and, 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 you know, kind of pursuing the, you know, kind of the intellectual uh, piece of, of this. And I don't really consider that work, to be honest with you. I mean, I enjoy that. So, um, but, you know, I have the freedom to do that when I want to do it. I don't, you know, there's nothing that, you know, says it has to be done at seven o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock at night. So, you know, that can all kind of get done on, you know, you know, it's time and location independent. So yeah, that's, you know, that, uh, I, yeah, I mean, that's the way I would, I, I would frame it for you. So. Yeah, that's perfect. That's, that's how I look at it as well. I, I love looking at numbers and spreadsheets and just yeah. looking at like understanding how a business works, uh, looking at all the different processes, seeing what, what can be improved. I personally don't enjoy the the implementation at all, like actually going and changing things and, and making sure they run and managing them. I don't like that, but the reviewing details, numbers, that's, that's fun. Yeah. 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 For, look in my day job, I mentioned that, you know, I've, 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 I've literally looked at, I think of every investable asset class. I mean, you know, yesterday um, I was lucky enough to be introduced to a guy that has uh, fish farms, salmon farms, in I think a dozen countries, and he was here uh, speaking to one of our sovereign wealth funds. And, you know, I got to spend, you know, an hour talking to him about his business and how it works. It's, you know, entirely fascinating. And, uh, Fish farms. you know, this, this yeah, yeah, sa you know, salmon, sa yes, very profitable. Salmon farms are very profitable because to fly salmon from where it is to where people want to consume it mm -hmm. is actually very expensive. And so salmon farms, you know, not only allow local control of the food supply, but also allow you know a fairly exotic uh, uh, you know kind of meal to be served too. So Very it's uh, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. So you know I, I've looked at you know kind of all of these asset classes and I enjoy it and and I love the stories too. I love meeting people that have actually yeah. done it. You know. Yeah, I love that too. How does how does the the salmon business compare to to a dropshipping store in terms of like returns and. <laughs> Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, first of all, yeah, yeah, margins. first, you know, yeah. So first, first of all, I mean, these are, these are uh, passive investments as opposed to, you know, we're actively involved in our business. And so, you know, the first thing you have to understand is when you, when you, you know, kind of invest in a fund that, 
you know, he's raising money in a fund structure, you're going to be locked up for, you know, eight or nine or 10 years in that fund. And you may get some, some, some distributions back, um, but you're not going to be involved in the business. So, you know, kind of, you know, I, when I, when I look at the economics, uh, you know, they're institutional quality economics, very attractive, certainly double digit types of IRRs, but they're not for me and my capital because, yeah. I'm, I'm looking, I'm always looking for the asymmetric payoff. Okay, so I mentioned the $25,000, you know, store that, you know, on many occasions in the last six years has earned $25,000 in any given month, right? So, so that's an asymmetric payoff. And I, I'm looking for, for those kinds of, those kinds of bets and not, not even the, you know, kind of the double digit IRRs. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's what I love about online business as well. Uh, you you, you you can you can do that with content size with some business, with SaaS businesses with anything and there are so yeah. many of these smaller deals that that have potential but of course they all require a bit more work than than maybe most first time buyers realize and uh, yeah and some sort of skills and really planning things through yeah 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 look I'm you know I, I'm the first one to tell you that um, you know we you know we got uh, kicked around a lot the first uh, couple of years that we were that we were owners and we made all the mistakes that rookies make and the you know by the way you know as much as we expected that it wasn't pay, it wasn't any fun you know we we didn't we didn't expect to be you know overnight successes but we also didn't expect it was going to be you know kind of as as uh, maybe as, as uh, painful it was, but, you know, on any given day, you know, if you have, a, if you, if you, you learn, had a problem, you learn something and you woke up the next day and you're, you're smarter and, you know, you'd be, you know, the, the old adage, which I think is like, you know, a thousand percent true is, you know, people overestimate what they can do in the short term and they underestimate what they can do in the longer term. And so I have a mentoring uh, uh, and coaching uh, program at professional website investors where I, you know, help people that, you know, kind of essentially, 50 years, 50 years old and, and older, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, kind of learn this business, you know, for the same reasons that I did, which is they want to exit their corporate job or they want to add, you know, an income stream and, and that'll allow them to retire early or, or to, to retire like I did when they want to, but still, still have income. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's in, in incredibly seductive to, to, you know, kind of see these kinds of returns right now it's a it's an amazing time that we're living in right now yeah okay very good so tell me a bit more about the the other deals you've done so you mentioned two that you did back in 2014 15 yeah and over the past six seven years what what, what was the biggest deal you you acquired though uh i think the biggest deal we have acquired you know i've, tr I've tried to acquire businesses that are uh I, you know they kind of it's uh, we, we've been ratcheting up in terms of the deal size and so you know right now we're looking at deals that are kind of 50 to a hundred thousand dollars for our own account i do have a number of people that have, have wanted to in, invest along with along with me and I, you know, have a, a kind of a, a small cadre of, of, of folks that have said, you know, I'll pitch in with you. I haven't done that yet, but uh, you know, probably the largest deal that we've done is in the, you know, kind of the sixty to seventy thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, you know, that still allows me what I think is an, a, an asymmetric payoff, uh, 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 you know, payoff, um, you know, uh, because I think you know, you know, when we we're looking at deals, we're looking at things where you know, kind of there's a massive impact that we can have, you know, kind of, uh, you know, in, improve, in improving kind of the, the, you know, several of the levers that I mentioned. Very good. Um, and are, are they all drop shipping stores? Yeah, they're all drop shipping. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the core of the business is drop shipping. And then we add, um, we add content to drive traffic, not only to our products, but then, you know, also informational content to drive mm -hmm. traffic to the store and then informational content to drive traffic to, to Amazon, uh, typically Amazon and other affiliate programs. Um, since we have a fair uh, representation in household items, you know, things around the house, you know, uh, 
you know, Amazon's a, a, a pretty good place. We've looked at, you know, we have a profile on share a sale and a couple of other affiliate programs, but Amazon's really the, the, the major, the major place. Mm -hmm. And so what we've tried to do is, is, um, and I actually have one store that, you know, you know, we really have tried to focus more on using the high ticket drop shipping, um, uh, you know, kind of advantages, um, and but leveraging the, the the revenue to be more affiliate and more ads. Now, the advantages of a high ticket drop shipping for uh, store, uh, you know, relative to just a pure uh, uh, affiliate site, is that by virtue of the fact that you may have you may, you know can have hundreds of products, you're going to have uh, typically rank for a lot of keywords. And if you look at you know kind of any e-commerce store. I mean, a, you know, an e-commerce store that doesn't do anything, uh, doesn't write any content, can rank for twenty or 30,000 keywords really easily. And there's a number of those out there, and I'm scouting for them every day and, and you know, looking at those niches, because I think that, you know, those, those can be bought and content can be added to them. And those can be, you know, you know, you know three to five X or three to 10 X, two to 10 X, you know, fairly easily, um, you know, you know, if they haven't taken advantage of uh, uh, content. And, you know, so the drop shipping typically is the primary source of revenue. Um, and then, you know, affiliate and uh, ads come after that. And how do you find your, your best deals? Where, where do you look for deals? Uh, I'm in, in several Facebook groups and I've kind of been a known buyer for a long period of time. And so I see a lot of private deal flow. I do, you know, have relationships with all the major brokers, and I, I look really hard at all of the, the deals that they have. Um, quite frankly, uh, the private deals are really hard to put together. Uh, the biggest problem is most people don't know their numbers, and uh, and, and you know, I, I think I have pretty good working relationships with, you know, four or five uh, 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 good professional working relationships uh, with 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 brokers, and. Um, you know, but I think I think our success has been in terms of numbers of deals has been on the private side. Um, but I think probably going forward, it's probably it, it might be uh, smaller deals that are get listed on some of the new players that are now offering access to smaller deals. Hmm. I think that might that might end up there's a bunch of new players that are kind of dealing at the lower end. But we're you know we're still I'm still looking you know up to a few uh, you know a few hundred thousand dollars and more. On, on deals because, you know, quite frankly, there are great opportunities out there right now. I'm very bullish on, you know, on e-commerce uh, in general. So, so, you know, we, we look at, you know, we, 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 we haven't done a deal that's a half a million dollars yet, but I, I certainly wouldn't, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, dispel any notion that we would do it because I, you know, I certainly would. I, I just would have to, and I have to be sure that, that you know, I, I'd have to see the right deal. Yeah, that's that's been our experience as well. That the best deals usually come from private private relationships. One once you've built some, once you've put some effort and build your private deal flow, and 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 you you can talk with all the brokers and look at all the all the different sites, but ultimately the best deals are usually the ones that come to you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, under under a hundred thousand people often don't have their numbers together. Uh, we we've seen that so many times as well. They um, and the funniest thing is, then 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 they might tell you, oh, I I'm making a hundred thousand dollars in in annual profit or something like that, but then you look at the numbers and it's actually losing money, like there is no profit. Yeah. And oh, I, you know, I mean, yeah. yeah. One well, one of the things that I'm sure you've done is too. I mean, you know, I I've said look uh, to to people, look, I, you know, I I you know, you know, am am I interested in buying your store? Maybe you show me the numbers. And if I can't, maybe I can introduce you to somebody. If I can't or won't do it, maybe I can introduce you to somebody or, or at least give you some good advice. And you're right. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing that people are doing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in revenue and they're not making any money. They don't know it. They think they are. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Where is it? Is it because their margins are too slim, or they're spending everything on on ads? On yeah, 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 and all of the above. I mean, they they literally don't track it, and you know what, you know what doesn't get measured doesn't get managed. 
And, you know, you had John Warla on not long ago, who's, yeah. I'm a big fan of his. And, you know, um, you know and, and I think that, you know, you, you've got to build these things to sell them. And if you don't know your numbers, you're, you're sunk. Um, dealing with a young guy right now who's got two, you know, seemingly beautiful stores. He literally doesn't know his numbers. He works with a very competent uh, a firm that does bookkeeping. And they're, you know, kind of trying to actually, you know, kind of determine exactly what the numbers are. And, you know, I, I, you know, coming from the world I come from, I mean, you know, that's, you know, kind of the, the you know, the, you know, the table stakes is you got to know your numbers. And if, I mean, I mean, I run a business for a living, so I know yeah. my numbers. Okay. Yeah. I guess so. that's, that's more a thing in, in the commerce and dropshipping because we've content sites, it's uh, it's it's not very common that people wouldn't know the numbers. They might not know the exact numbers, but it's pretty straightforward. You just right. log into your affiliate account, your AdSense account, right? Right, and you see it right away. Yeah. Or you know, if SaaS businesses to your Stripe, so it's usually yeah. much easier. If e-commerce, do with, with drop shipping, maybe it's a bit different. But what what platforms do these sites usually use with drop shipping? Uh, yeah, I mean, it used to, five or six years ago. You used to see uh, deals on Magento and yeah. Big Commerce and Shopify, and now it's all Shopify. Yeah, it's all I mean, Shopify. yeah, yeah. So we we have two stores on Big Commerce from the good old days, and I wish we could get rid of them. So <laughs> it's complicated, but but we're stuck. You know, what are you gonna do? And have you ever bought content sites, for example? Like Amazon affiliate sites and then transfer them to drop shipping. Uh, I bought I bought a small uh, Amazon affiliate site uh, a few months ago, very small. And the idea was it's in a uh, a niche that that uh, we're interested in. And the idea was that I would ultimately see what what uh, uh, what uh, content there worked, and probably move it to the drop shipping site. Um, and you know. And, and I'm still debating whether or not I should just send the uh, referrals over to the Shopify site uh, for at, per, at purchase, right? For, to, you know, so the content would, you know, click on this link and buy it from Amazon, click on this link and buy it from us or something, you know, one of those things. And, and I haven't, you know, I haven't done that yet. I kind of want to test that out. Uh, but right now, all of the content we're publishing on, uh, on our Shopify sites and Shopify is not really user friendly. And there aren't many people that actually do this. And, you know, I'm sure you probably have, have, have found this to be true. You know, this is kind of a hard problem that we're solving. And a lot of other people <laughs> don't want to solve that problem. And so, you know, you know uh, I think we've, we've uh, done a pretty good job of solving it. And uh, I have a, a, a couple of people that I uh, uh, professionally that I've worked with that are doing the same thing. And I think when you get that solved, um, you know, for e-commerce, for Shopify sites, you kind of have a leg up on the competition. So I look at that, I look at hard problems like that as being a, a real opportunity. Uh, yeah, we, we had quite a few Amazon affiliate and other affiliate sites. And I was always curious to, to look into some opportunity to set up uh, drop shipping or, or yeah. e-commerce, but it's, it's complex. Like it just requires many, other different things. If you are not already doing uh, e-commerce or drop shipping, that's just difficult. But if you are doing it already, that's much easier. And if you are in a, sim in yeah. a similar niche, right? Yeah, and, and and you know, WordPress is a dream to work with compared to you know, yeah. kind of what's what's inside Shopify. So, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, very cool. So, what are some interesting lessons that you've learned from this from this? moment couple dozen acquisitions and and this mm. e-commerce dropshipping portfolio that you've built over this past six seven years look i i think that the you know the i think the the, the exciting you know what's exciting to me is um that you know we've had this massive adoption of of uh you know kind of new new people to the internet that are looking for information be it in content sites, be it on e-commerce sites, and there's been you know a huge uptick in e-commerce adoption, and so I think that this is kind of uh, forcing everybody to up their game at a time when you know I, I'm kind of really engaged in in being part of that uh, you know conversation, and so you, you know with regards to you know kind of 
past learnings, you know, we, we made the rookie mistakes and we've, we've had some successes, some of them lucky and some of them, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, because we were in the right place at the right time or, you know, uh, since I'm, you know, kind of continually looking at deals, I see best practices and we implement them. We've had a couple of, of really terrific successes. And so anybody who's listening to this, who's not looking at lots of deals really should, uh, because you see lots of great ideas from people that are selling sites and you learn lots of things. And I'm a big believer in that. But I just think it's a, a, it's a fascinating time that we're living in. And I honestly think that based on what's going on with global supply chains right now, the 2022 is going to be better than 2021. We're suffering like everybody is on inventory shortages. And whether you're a content site referring to Amazon and they're out of stock or whether you're an e-commerce store and your suppliers are out of stock, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're all suffering the, from the same you know, uh, inventory issues. So, um, uh, you know, except for people that come to your site and click on the ads, you know, you know yeah. um, uh, physical products are in, you know, kind of in a, in a, in a bad way right now. And I think that's going to recover. And I think that the purchasing power is there, you know, the, the financial, during the financial crisis, household net worth declined something like $8 trillion. And during the 12, first 12 months of, of the pandemic, household net worth increased by eight trillion. So it's a very different world this time than it was, you know, kind of back in the financial crisis. And, you know, that's a huge positive. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other ones that I won't get into, but that's a huge positive, you know, kind of to be in, invested in this. As you know, multiples are going up. I think they're gonna keep going up too. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm both a buyer and a seller, I guess. What what kind of multiples have you actually been paying for your deals? Uh, uh, everything, like from, everything from infinite because there's no earnings, but we like the, you know, we, we like what we see, you know, and we don't spend a lot of money when we're paying infinite. Um, but you know, we look for something that's got a foundation. To um, you know, in the private markets, uh, you know, we've, we've spent. Uh, 25x to maybe as high as 30x on 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 some things uh, that fit in well with what we're doing um, but probably not above that in the private markets and I haven't purchased anything in you know kind of from the from the brokerage world in the last couple of years so I haven't is really paid up for anything is that uh, 25 30x of monthly yeah monthly yeah profit. monthly yeah yeah monthly yeah and that's yeah. a profit after all the expenses like ads and everything and yeah costs okay yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, that would be sites typically that are going to have, you know, the 15 to 20 percent uh, margins mm -hmm. after everything. So, would they have you know, I, I see. So I see. So I see a lot of sites where, you know, particularly younger, younger, young, younger guys have, have built sites and, and they have margins under 10 percent. You know, we wouldn't have any interest in that. I mean, I, I heard a, 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 a wonderful comment. Um, uh, on a podcast, uh, you know, tip of the hat to Andrew Udarian's podcast, which I'm sure you've listened to in the past. And he interviewed uh, Dana John Zemus, who said something that I think is, is epic. And she said she can fix anything, everything but the margins. And, yeah. you know, you, you have to remember that, you know, kind of in the world of drop shipping, uh, we're price takers. And so um, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. So, so we, we try to fix the margins that we, you know, given, given the levers that I just mentioned. But um, there are only certain things you can do. And if, you know, kind of the margins to start with are below nine or 10%, that's going to be, you know, that's going to be tough. That's going to be a tough one. Okay. So for, for someone who doesn't have as much experience in, in uh, drop shipping, you mentioned margins. What are some other things you should look at to, to, to figure out if it's a good business to, to acquire potentially? So have a margin above yeah. like 15% at least, yeah? Yeah, yeah, we were looking for, uh, you know, so, you know, kind of 25% cost of goods sold plus shipping, you know, uh, so, you know, cost, cost a ship. So, uh, you know, that, you know, that's kind of one of the things we look at. Um, you know, if I just think of my favorite pages in Google Analytics, I look at the sources of traffic. Uh, drop shippers, you know, a typical high ticket drop shippers rely a lot on, on uh, Google ads. And, you know, we had a situation, Michael, where, where um, we bought a store, the, you know, the store that I mentioned, 
And, you know, it, we had a fantastic supplier and kind of, you know, big chunk of the revenues was coming from that supplier. And, you know, when we bought the store, there were only 12 other, you know, online retailers and a year later, there were 50. And so Google ads quickly got out of control and wasn't profitable to run Google ads. Uh, now we were very fortunate that we had another supplier where we had a great relationship that, it, that exploded and did incredibly well. But I'm very, very wary of stores that, you know, 70, 75, 80% of the traffic is for coming from Google ad strategies because that can, you know, that can turn the wrong direction uh, really quickly. So I look at you know, kind of traffic strategies uh, and diversification of tra traffic strategies. But, you know, you know as I mentioned, I, typically we're looking at ones where, um, uh, you know, uh, particularly Google free shopping is a big component. Um, and then I, you know, I, I look at, uh, you know, kind of, uh, as everyone would do, I look at kind of what is the reliance on any given supplier? What are the popular products? Obviously go into the niche and look at who the, um, uh, you know, what the ability is to add suppliers, what the comp who the competition is. Um, you know, I'm particularly excited if I've never seen a store in this niche before, because, you know, that would be new to me and I, I learned something, but also if it's new to me and I've been looking at these things pretty carefully, you know, for, you know, you know, six or seven years now, um, you know, that, that gets me going. Uh, that's a few things. All right, very good. And for traffic, do you mostly look for stores that get more organic traffic or just you look for more, more of a mix? Yes, I, I, I like to look, for, I, you know, it was very early on, uh, you know, there was, there, it's, there seemed to be, you know, with the website brokers, this mantra that, that um, you had to have paid traffic strategies that work to really kind of, you know, have a, uh, uh, a valuable business. And, you know, I've had more fun lighting hundred dollar bills on fire than I have paying for Google, Google ads. Okay. So now that Google shopping ads are free, Okay, you, you know, uh, other Google strategies, I, I certainly we use them and, you know, but I, I don't want to see stores that have a heavy reliance on those other paid Google strategies. Google is, you know, your frenemy yeah. and um, those things can turn around, like I mentioned with that one supplier where, you know, suddenly it was out of our control, the number of other online retailers that were, that had those products. So, so yeah, I mean, we like to see organic traffic. Uh, we love to see it uh, coming to uh, product and collection pages. And we love to see uh, people uh, getting sales off of uh, free Google product listing uh, ads. Oh, yeah, very good. And in terms of uh, uh, sizes, so, so you, you mentioned you are looking to acquire some in six figures, but haven't yet. But what, what yeah. differences do you see with deals that are in like six figures closer to mid six figures compared to like in five figures with drop shipping. How does it yeah. change? Yeah. And look, you know, to, to be honest, it's, it's typically uh, the age and, you know, success begets success. So when someone has built a store and it starts to get successful and they stick with it, you know, a lot of the ones that are in the five uh, figure range are a few years old um, and, 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 you know, uh, the ones that are six figures are six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it is age because as, you know, you develop stronger relationships with your suppliers, good things happen. You know, we have suppliers sending us leads regularly because, you know, my wife, uh, who's the front person in all this is known in, in, you know, some of these niches. And, and so, uh, you know, I would say it's the age and that longevity uh, of being there and being a good trusted partner, to be Very honest good. with you. Yeah. And what, what would you say is the biggest challenge with, with uh, dropshipping stores? Well, I think, I think the biggest challenge for uh, uh, successful dropshipping stores, you know, when they sell is if they run across somebody like me and, and you know, I look at a store that's a few hundred thousand dollars and it's getting 75% of the traffic from, you know, Google ad strategies. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be immediately suspicious that that's going to go sideways. So, you know, I, I will walk away from that one. Um, uh, you know, I, I just need to see a better diver a diversity of traffic. And have you had any deals that just went south quickly or you acquired the store and it just, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I bought a, fraud. Oh yeah. Yeah. I bought a fraud early on. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, who, yeah. Who hasn't, who hasn't lost money on a fraud on Flippa? Come on. 
I mean, we all, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a rite of passage, right? Exactly. So, yeah, is, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So probably, so in the beginning of 2016, I bought a store in Flippa, sold uh, uh, wedding incidentals, uh, low ticket, horrible, you know, and, uh, you know, the kind of the woman was, you know, kind of, you know, saying, I've done everything, send me the money, send me the money. And we found out that, you know, she was selling stuff out of her garage and, this is just a horrible mistake. So, you know, that evaporated, you know, really quickly. I mean, that, that was, that was a, that was a horrible mistake. So yeah, yeah, of course, you know, you, you, yeah, sure. it's, just, you have to, you have to lose all your money once on flip it or really, you know, feel like you can, you know, kind of uh, uh, have any authority. Um, very cool. And so you, you mentioned professional website investors. Uh, yes. Tell me more about it. What, what is it? Well, uh, what, yeah. what does it do? Yeah, so it, it's it, it started out as being you know kind of a chronicle of of my journey and some of the uh, kind of the the principles uh, that you know you know kind of on on how we were doing things. I was getting uh, interest from participating on podcasts like this, um, and and uh, so you know I I, I actually recorded twenty five or twenty six uh, podcast episodes and wrote some articles. And then, quite frankly, I got you know overwhelmed, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, active in the business, and you know, subsequently, it sourced that it, it's kind of uh, started as a source, you know, kind of a lead resource for me, for people that want to spend money, you know, kind of to get one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring or coaching, um, you know, kind of the individuals that I mentioned earlier, kind of people that are, uh, you know, kind of looking at, you know, uh, you know, either you know, exiting their, their, their usually corporate career or their career or coming up into retirement and want to do something uh, different. And, you know, it's you know, been kind of one of the things I enjoy is, is, is talking to those people um, on the one hand, and then, you know, you know, becoming friends and, and ultimately who knows, you know, putting a get, putting together a small community of people that might, might do deals together or, or something like that. You know, so, so far, you know, uh, it's a lead resource and and it's been very rewarding to me in terms of the relationships I've established. Yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, I've um, I've also been doing something similar. I enjoy like having a small community, bringing some people together. Yeah. We do some some private mastermind masterminds. We we do some uh, different things here and there, and we do deals together with different people as well. Uh, that's always fun. Yeah. But you also do some some training. You mentioned there. Yeah? So how does that work? Is it like a program or is it just coaching? Yeah. So, so, so I have, uh, you know, I have for, for my, my mentoring and coaching program, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I have an agenda and a curriculum. And when I talk to someone, I find out where they are in terms of their, their, their knowledge set, where they are in terms of their, their skill set, where they are in terms of what's interesting to them. And then we can kind of go different directions. So one, one fellow that I'm working with right now, who is an IT professional, um, you know, has an amazing opportunity to, to, to do roll-ups in the IT space, but he also wants to diversify on, uh, into the online space. And I, you know, I'm, I'm certain that he'll end up uh, buying a high ticket drop shipping store. And that's what we're looking at. But we're also talking about content, uh, content sites and, and content as a strategy, which is you know, something that obviously I, I talk about, you know, with, with regards to drop shipping, but, you know, content standalone. And so where he ends up, he, he, he might do, you know, kind of all of those. I have a, have a wonderful guy that uh, has, I consider to be a, a good friend now. I've been working with for a year and a half as a senior executive at, at, at Amazon. And, you know, again, he has not only a drop shipping store, but he has, I don't know, three or four now content sites where he's you know, kind of actively uh, building uh, kind of different strategies around, uh, you know, kind of, you know, different opportunities that, that he sees out there. And, you know, it's actually become quite success, quite successful pretty quickly doing that. So, I'm so, nervous. you know, yeah. So, so yeah, I to answer the question. I have, you know, kind of a, a, a program and then, you know, I kind of a, adapt it to the, the individual and their interests and, and, and kind of what their skill sets are. And why did you do it? Did you do it because you wanted to help people or is it part of like your revenue stream? No, I, you know, I, to be honest with you, uh, it takes up time on my weekend and, 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 you know, that's not time that, that I necessarily want to give up. Um, 
I, I did it because I enjoy making the relationships. And I think that, you know, kind of building this community is ultimately going to pay off in the long run and we'll do something together. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I just, I do it because I enjoy it. And I, I love talking shop. You know, it, it's, you know, kind of uh, when you get involved in free masterminds, the reason that you do it is you do it because you, you know, you can learn things, you know, you're always learning on the one hand, on the other hand, you're establishing great relationships and you, you know, that's you know kind of part of this whole virtual world that we live in, and in this e-commerce world, you know uh, the people aren't necessarily in the same city that you're in, or you know any place near you, and so you do it, you know you do it virtually. All right, very good. Well, thank you, Ian Bon. That was a pleasure to talk to you, and I've learned quite a bit about uh, about drop shipping. Actually, I'm I'm actually quite curious now to look at some drop shipping deals, and I. You really inspired me to look more into dropshipping. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, thank you. That's quite a compliment coming from you, Michael. I really uh, am a big fan of uh, the podcast, and uh, it's been an honor to to be on here and, and be in in the the, the group of, of uh, folks that you've had uh, that you know have been guests. So thank you for 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 the invitation. Much appreciated. Well, thank you. So how how can people find out more about you? You mentioned professional website investors .com. Yeah, Ian Bond at professional website. Uh, Ian Bond at professional website investors .com is my email address. Professional website investors .com is the website. Uh, I promise to uh, to update some of the content, but there are some good pod, uh, podcast episodes that are only a couple of years old. That kind of for people that are kind of just uh, starting out, uh, tackle some of the kind of the uh, the beginner topics or things that go through your mind. When you're first starting out, um, anybody who's a little bit further along than that, you know, uh, don't uh, or uh, that is interested, don't don't hesitate to drop me an email. All right, though. Thank you. Domain Magnet is a leader in buying and selling online businesses with a proven track record of expertise gained from over 300 deals since 2004. To learn more about how we can help you acquire or exit a profitable online business today, head over to DomainMagnet.com for more details.